I've talked about district hopping a lot on my channel over the course of the last three years. I've talked about it in many different contexts, and one of the reasons why I've focused on it so hard over the course of the time of this channel and even before that is because I have been a distro hopper for my entire time on Linux. It was really, really bad when I first started because I was a very, I was very much a Linux noob, even more of a noob than I am now. And I didn't seem to grasp the idea that when something didn't work on a particular distro, it didn't mean that the distribution was broken. It just mean that I had to fix it. I didn't understand that. I mean, I probably knew it in the back of my mind, but just didn't want to or something. I don't know. I was hopping a lot, sometimes two or three times a week in those early days. Now, granted, I didn't stay on that schedule for very long. Eventually, I settled down a little bit and started using more established distributions, and I got used to fixing things as I went along. But even then, I still was always on the lookout for something better and something different. So I continued to distro hop. And a lot of people are exactly like me. But times are changing folks. I'm on a Linux challenge right now. I've talked about this on Mastodon and even mentioned it a couple times in videos here. And I'm calling this the two-year Linux challenge. I am dedicating myself to using the same distribution for the next two years. And I'm already over a month in. I've chosen OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and I'm happy to report that I'm very, very happy with it. But that's not really the point of today's video. I'm not going to talk much about OpenSUSE. I'm not going to make a video every milestone of this journey. I'll make a couple open SUSE videos over the course of the of the years or whatever, but I'm not going to try to spam you guys with open SUSE content. But instead what I wanted to talk about today was finding your Linux home because the final destination of distro hopping is to find that distribution that fits you perfectly. I've talked about this before that one of the best things that you can do as a new Linux user is to try all the distributions, to try all the desktop environments, to try all the window managers. The only way to know which package manager you enjoy the most is to try it. The only way to find out which desktop environment you enjoy the most is to try it. That's the only way to do it. Even if you come to Linux and say you install Ubuntu and you adore Ubuntu right out of the, the gate, you're going to do yourself a disservice by not also trying other things because just because you really like GNOME doesn't mean you're not going to like Plasma better or just because you really like App doesn't mean you're not going to like Pac-Man better. You've never experienced the, the gloriousness that is the AUR. And even if, let's say you started on Arch and you really enjoy the AUR, you aren't going to understand the, or be able to r recognize and understand the stability that is Debian unless you try it for a little while, right? So... Distro hopping is super important, and I've talked about this basically until I'm blue in the face. One of the most important things you can do is to distro hop. But, and this is the point of the video for today, we don't want to lose sight of the destination. Because there is a destination at the end of all the distro hopping. And that is to find our Linux home, to find that one distribution that fits us the best. People who distro hop just to distro hop, and those people do exist, those people probably don't ever see a destination in in their head. They can t they think that or they enjoy distro hopping. They've come to the point where distro hopping has turned into their hobby. They, they like setting up Linux so much that they just enjoy it. But for the most part, most people who distro hop are searching for that one true distro and trying to find it is the process of distro hopping. But people do need to realize that eventually you're going to have tried all the distributions. Eventually you're going to have tried all the desktop environments and the window managers and the package managers and the display managers and all this stuff. You're going to have used Linux in every way that Linux can be used. So what you need to keep in mind is that as you're going through these distributions, you need to pay attention to what actually works. And when you do find something that works, don't always be tempted by something that looks new and shiny. That's the biggest temptation for a distro hopper because once you get in the habit of distro hopping, even once you find that distribution that is your Linux home, you can get tempted by a distribution that comes along on OMG Ubuntu or DistroWatch or whatever and think, oh my goodness, that distribution looks really cool. I think I should go try it. And then you wipe out your system and you find out that, well, the grass wasn't always greener on the other side and I shouldn't have never left that place that worked just fine. So there has to be a limit. There has to be some kind of goal that you're setting yourself. What are you looking for at the end of the day? You have to know the answer to that question. What are you looking for? Are you looking for a lot of software? 
maybe then Arch is your final destination. Are you looking for stability? Then maybe Debian or OpenSUSE or Fedora is your destination. Are you looking for a really big and large community? Then maybe Ubuntu is what you're looking for. You should know as you're distro hopping exactly what you're looking for because the only way to know when you've found what you're looking for is to have that answer. So if you install OpenSUSE or you install Fedora and it works really well for you and it has all the features and setup and community that you're looking for, if you've known all along exactly what you're looking for when you find it, you can consider yourself done. It doesn't mean that you're never going to try another distribution ever, but perhaps what it means is that your main machine, the one that you use the most, is settled and then you can install another hard drive and do your testing and stuff like that or maybe you install a VM or whatever. Maybe that sates your temptation to try new things while keeping your main distro that is stable and all the things that you want right there for you to use without having to constantly wipe it away and start over again. So the point of this video is to kind of just remind people who, who do distro hop to keep in mind that there is a final destination and that as you're going through your distros over and over again, you need to keep in mind the things that you really consider important. What is important to you in a good distro? And once you find those things, don't take them for granted. Don't assume automatically that just because you've found, yeah, you found your perfection, you don't assume that there's going to be something better out there because there's probably not. Once you've found the distribution that works for you really, really well, don't leave it behind. Settle down, get to know her, and you'll be happy. I promise you. So, all of that being said, OpenSUSE, I believe, is my home for the next two years. And I'm hoping beyond that because I truly do like OpenSUSE quite a lot. I've been going for a, over a month now, and it is fantastic. If you want to hear me rant and rave and talk and just gush all over how awesome OpenSUSE is, I'll be talking about that in my Patreon exclusive podcast this week that will be posted in the next couple days. So if you want to check that out, patreon.com slash Linuxcast, and that's what you call a tease. But anyways, if you have any comments on all this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Links for PayPal and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.